Greetings, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our meeting of the Creative Lab, the first in the new season. As we work with Energy of Virgo, we enter the new season of our Creative Lab, Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. I welcome you on behalf of the Hekal group from Jerusalem and uh, Klaus Schale group from Germany and the 2025 initiative. Thank you for joining us today. And I invite Uta to take us into this journey. Okay. Thank you and welcome everyone after our summer break. Here in the Nations Lab, spiritual students come together from many nations every month as a council of elders in training. We seek to contribute a seed of the future for the UN. And we do this by practicing skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul guided United Nations that we hope for in the future. And we try them out by applying them in our focus on various world issues. I think this is our fifth year now. So today we will go over the ground which we have covered so far in the last while, especially um, to look at an emerging methodology that um, um, to consolidate a bit and to consider together also how to build on it uh, in our next steps. So in this session here, we will have an overview of what has been done so far, especially in the last few months, and then taking it into meditation, embodying it, experiencing it in our council chamber, and then we will have more time than usual for sharing our ideas and insights. Um, and we look very much forward to everybody's input, as of course uh, we are developing this experiment together as an intergroup. So for the overview, I will now give over to Sabine. Thank you, Uta, and hello, dear friends. Uh, let me invite you to a little time trip through our already rich history of our nation's lab. So let's start with some technique. Our main methodology from the beginning is along the lines of Roberto Assegioli's psychosynthesis of nations. It is based on the premise that a nation has the same buildup as an individual. It is a living entity with a physical, emotional and mental body and a soul or higher purpose. It goes through the same processes of personality integration and learning to express its higher potential. Roberto Assagioli recommended that those who want to work with a collective entity should have gone through this psychosynthetic process at least partially by themselves. He said that at least there should be a measure of personality integration and a beginning soul contact. Otherwise, one will not be able to discern between between one's own inner contact, content and the collective entity one is part of or observes. A level of disidentification is required for this work. We need to be able to discern our own subpersonalities from what the Tibetan master calls the stool of the director. From here, we can make contact with our soul 
and our higher purpose within a wider context. The mature inner director connects one's inner being with the environment in which one lives and works, and in doing so, aligns everything with the realization of the soul's task for the benefit of the greater whole. Once this attitude is lived in our personal lives, we become fit for working with a collective entity. While we can engage with a collective entity by ourselves, this kind of work is profitably done as a group. In a group setup, we naturally have different angles and backgrounds, and this helps to perceive a more rounded out picture of the collective entity under observation. Also, a group field provides a certain stability, safety and resilience in the face of the collective forces which we are exposed to in this work. During the first years in the Nations Lab, we focused on building small national groups which would go th through the same psychosynthetic integration process to become a service instrument on behalf of their nation. We practice being part of the Ajna Center of our nation, which is the equivalent of the stool of the director in the individual. Figurat figuratively, we visualized ourselves overlooking our nation from the pinnacle of a high mountain. We practice a soul-guided, impartial, scientific attitude with harmlessness and humility. From this elevated, disidentified place, we observe the underlying mental and emotional currents of our nation in a similar way as we observe our own personality. And from here, we can become aware also of moments or events in the national life where the soul of the nation expresses itself. In this work, massive collective forces flow through us. Our consciousness is flooded with national thought forms and emotional patterns, which may be experienced as powerful entities pressing against our psyche. To withstand this pressure, a stable, well-defined sense of self as a group is needed. A trained group can hold a national field of conflicting energies and transform it step by step into a creative tension, at least in our own consciousness. For this process to happen, it is essential to recognize the national patterns and their trigger points. Looking back at long-term pattern forming developments can help to better understand the current state. This work was the focus in the nation's lab in the first few years. So we did a series of snapshots of our various nations. Then our focus shifted to the awareness of each other, not only as delegates of our various nations, but as delegates of the international field. We are becoming more of a world citizen. By the way, if you want to read up a bit deeper on the psychosynthetic process from individual to group to collective consciousness, you may, you may find some material in Uta's book, Awaken the Will to Love, which we, like always, put as a link into the chat box below. We can sense this planetary consciousness in great world citizens like Doc Hammarskjöld, the first secretary general of the United Nations, 
or Albert Einstein. Also, Asad Jolie worked as a world citizen, more than a being identified as an Italian. Such planetary consciousness makes us part of the planetary Ajna center. We are learning to act as wise elders on a planetary scale. In true esoteric fashion, we went about it in the nation's lab by doing as if. For a few, for a few years now, we have been building an inner meeting space in which to try out this more inclusive state of consciousness. We call it our Council Chamber of Elders in Training. Through continuous visualization, we are gradually weaving a space on the subtle planes, refining it as we go. It has now become our workspace. When we meet in this solid, focused space, we are able to recognize larger processes and think in broader terms. We experimented with expanding our field of observation from single nations to international cultural entities and alliances. For example, we looked at the BRICS Alliance last year and this year we work with Europe as a continent, with the USA in its field of relationships, and with the Middle East as a cultural block or region. We experimented with speaking as the collective entity in first person, rather than speaking about it. This work brought intense inner processes and interactions. Larger collective energies played powerfully through us. It takes stronger inner forces to deal energetically with larger collectives. While preparing for our planned session on Russia and the West, we reached a plateau. We encountered a limit of capacity. Four of us were working on it our two Russian co-workers, Dennis and Sveta, and we two European Germans. We could immediately sense that this field of tension is considerably larger than what we held up until now. Arguably, the relationship between Russia and the West is currently the focal point of the greatest world tension. In our foursome, we touched it, we held it with much love and humor. With much patience, we faced a more challenging language barrier than up to the, than up until now. The digital translations were helpful, but also caused misunderstandings. We encountered many instances of surprise at how different are our thought processes and priorities. As the time for the next Nations Lab session came closer, we realized that we are not ready for sharing something which feels right to both the Russian co-workers and the Nations Lab team. Grappling with bridging this frontier, we identified one central question. When we speak or write about our nation, and about international relationships. Who do we identify as? As who do we speak? Do we express the personality voice of our nation? Or are we a representative of the Ajna center of the nation? Or are we speaking as a planetary elder in training? While this seems to be a simple logical question, it points to a deep inner process, which needs to be worked through and not just mentally grasped. It requires a gradual maturing process on the individual and group level. We realized 
how big and crucial are these sequential steps of disidentification and embracing a wider, more inclusive identification. First, the step from an involved, reactive personality to the disidentified, soul-infused observer who sees from the national pinnacle a larger perspective. And then the step from identifying as the National Ajna Center to becoming part of the planetary Ajna Center, serving humanity rather than our nation. This last shift implies that our primary reference group, our home, is no longer our national affiliation. Our sense of belonging lies now inside the group of elders in training. Let's think about that for a moment. Feel into that. We become part of the one planetary server. Perhaps this is what it takes to tackle the world tension successfully and safely. There is much to learn, much weaving inside and between groups, learning to work as one unified instrument, as the Ajna center of the planet in alignment with hierarchy, receptive to hierarchy, becoming conscious cooperators with hierarchy, now towards the 2025 benchmark, to hold the world tension includes getting to know parts of humanity which we have not no idea about and stretching our consciousness into a geopolitical perspective, widening, widening, opening our consciousness to embrace a world community, creating and maintaining a safe space for difficult conversations seems key at this stage, building ever deepening trust in small working teams, getting to know each other slowly. A longer breath is needed, staying power. Building inner relationships over outer divides and consistently safeguarding and preserving what has been achieved, even when the dialogue may take a temporary break. This, dear friends, is where we are at the moment in our nation's lab experiment. So let us feel the richness and the complexity. Let's recognize the meaning of precious tools and their application in a scientific manner. Deep gratitude for our common journey in the Council Chamber of Elders in Training. Over to you, Uta. Mm. Thank you, Sabina. Just take a moment to just breathe. Letting this overview settle into our consciousness. It's not uh, really new to our minds what we have been listening to now. But this journey in consciousness is a deep one. Um, and uh, when we take it now into meditation, we will trace exactly these stages 
these focal points in consciousness that Sabina was talking about, we will visit them, go through them in slow motion. And uh, we have found that this is actually the most important um, aspect of our work, this um, journey from one identification to a bigger one to a bigger one, building our sense of self as a soul-infused personality, as sitting on the stool of the director, our own personal, our group one, our nation one, and then the stool of the director of our planet, Ajna Center. Yeah, so we will do it now in a meditative process within our council chamber of elders in training and uh, reflecting also together where we are now in our work and what could possibly be steps onwards now at this uh, pivotal time towards uh, 2025. So, let us for this moment just release everything that we have heard and collect our consciousness inwards into our inner stillness. inner peacefulness, breathing deeply, coming into our center, grounding in our body, settling to our place on our Mother Earth. Standing in the love and freedom of our soul. Now with conscious intent, let us collect our awareness into the center of the head. Consciously taking our place on the stool of the director. In this place in ourselves from which we are holding the reins of our life expression. Conscious soul and incarnation. And going now to the first expansion, expand our focus from our individual life sphere to open up to our nation as a living being in which we live. Getting a sense of this collective And now visualizing ourselves climbing up on a mountain, overlooking our nation, looking at it from above, observing it from, from a pinnacle. And we 
feel our love for our nation. And at the same time, our freedom from it. And we find ourselves in the presence of other national observers on this pinnacle. And we find that in their presence, we are able much better to discern thought forms and patterns within our nation. And we are more free from our personality reactivity. From here, from this pinnacle, together with others, we are able to observe with a scientific, impartial, soul-guided attitude. And we realize that in this state, in this state of consciousness, we are part of the Ajna center of our nation. Let's take a moment to take note of this particular state of consciousness. We are part, we are a cell in the Ajna center of our nation. And now we raise our eyes from our own national pinnacle that we have looked down from and become aware of the other pinnacles of other nations and the teams of colleagues that stand on these pinnacles that share the same national Ajna state of consciousness. And sense how we resonate with each other even without personally knowing about each other or knowing ourselves on a personal level. A sense of companionship from pinnacle to pinnacle. And now in our inner experience, let us let this resonance grow in slow motion. Sense it growing and observing what is happening in our sense of identity. Our vibration rises and an inner process is happening of expanding beyond our national identity, our identification with it is loosening. And as the vibration rises, we are swinging more and more into resonance with this world group of Ajna workers. kind of become swept into this larger group. And let us now consciously, observingly widen into this state of consciousness of this intergroup of world workers. Sensing its vibration a little higher, 
a little closer to hierarchy. As we are letting ourselves be drawn deeper into it, see ourselves entering into a quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. Planetary elders in training. Taking our places in geometric order. Being aware of this atmosphere in which we together sit, the geometrical harmony of it. In the center of the chamber, we visualize the flame, this flame of our combined sustained will to love. We let our hearts tune to it. Becoming aware how we are together holding this space of intent, sustained love. And also becoming aware of the mental space of the council chamber that we hold together, a calm, clear, lighted space. And we realize how it vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And how through this vibration we are telepathically linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. They have very different backgrounds, spiritual traditions from ours. We are telepathically linked on this vibration. Let us take note of this particular state of consciousness, the Ajna center of the planet. together with our co-workers from all the other nations across cultures and spiritual backgrounds. We are part of the one planetary server. In a sense of this specific sense of identity, As such, our awareness strives to embrace the planet in its entirety. So together as one, let us take a brief look at the continents,
and at the nations that are spread out on them. Our own nation among them. We take a glance at the bigger collectives that we have previously visited. The BRICS Alliance, which has expanded, and which will have its annual summit again next month. Europe as a cultural entity. Just take a moment to tune back into it, this cultural entity. And the USA and its relationships and the Middle East as a cultural block, cultural region. And now let us take a brief look at the field of tension between Russia and the West. Just a brief impartial look. Okay, and now from the council chamber, let us expand our consciousness upwards now. Opening receptivity towards the higher co-workers who guide this nation's lab project, Ashwami co-workers. Sensing telepathically into this channel of communication that has been developing and continues to develop. And which is part of a growing cooperation, a general growing cooperation between the Ajna center of the planet and the heart center of the planet hierarchy. becoming more accessible, more discernible. More practically workable. Being aware of this field of growing telepathic interplay between the many outer outposts and the inner ashrams.
getting a sense of hierarchy as it readies itself towards their centennial conclave next year. Two thousand twenty five is almost upon us. Let's see if we can telepathically swing into this preparation, readying ourselves to, to play our part. Dedicating our shared lighted council chamber space as an instrument, as a receptacle, a focal point. And let us take a few moments in conference deep to open ourselves to any impressions on our work in the near future. Taking perhaps a couple of minutes.
and taking one more moment to just let the received impressions settle down within the council chamber. Your working material. And releasing, resting for another moment in the council chamber, cherishing each other's presence. And returning now to our individual grounding, breathing, and taking a few moments, perhaps to note down any impressions. Okay, so let us open the floor now for sharing any insights, any ideas that may have come to us about the ground we covered or about our present stage and especially about what we may envision as we go forward. This is Deborah from the USA. And I would really like to thank you all for that amazing summary of the evolution of this work as a group. Not all of us were in on it from the beginning, but I think most of us have experienced some of the movement and progression 
and challenges and breakthroughs. So I feel that it is very vital to focus on, as a group, what does hierarchy need from us for the 20, excuse me, <coughs> 2025 conclave? And what does humanity need from us to receive the dispensation of that pending conclave? Hello, this is Helen. Um, I am sharing, but I am almost wordless um, with the solemnity of the moment, of all this work that has been done, and um, the summary of where we are at now as a group. Um, I was especially um, impressed by this uh, evolu evolutional movement that we have uh, uh, experienced, and I can talk about myself and my and the group, the group I am in, the groups I am in, really growing, growing, and expanding both individually and both as a group beyond identity or identification. Um. And in this state of consciousness, to be brought into meditation and to uh, um, to enter the council chamber, it is uh, so tangibly a state of consciousness. And we just don't go there to visit and sit around and uh, but we are we are swept into it. We are brought into it. It's a, it's a movement upward. Um, I, the whole, I think that the, those few years that we have been working together were for me a um, spiritual scientific experiment, which I am very... Um, uh, privilege to be part of. I could go on and on, even though I don't, uh, I am wordless. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, I am so grateful for this uh, endeavor, the way we are doing it, and, um, and this togetherness. and this freedom that we are beginning to uh, touch upon. So my blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. As we meditated, it, it's uh, came to me is that um, <clears throat> the, the focus on the national uh, work, standing in position of national ajna, is in a way it's it's a 
stretch for us, a stride towards the future. Uh, expanding our capacity towards that period where we can work with the national group the same as we work now with our own group because in a way this and national work it's 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 the next phase it's a next step i don't know uh if i'm right or not but it's it's just wasn't an impression at the moment and uh, it requires quite an expanded capacity for us work uh as a group so it's in a way it's it's a it's it's a challenge for us and a call to make that step forward Hmm. Yeah, the more we expand uh, our focus of service, our field of service, the more we, we need to be um, with a sense of self, you know, integrated and stable uh, as a group. As a group entity, a unit of service. Yes. That's what you meant with uh, with the, the the process that we we need to do as a group, right? Yes, it's um, on 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 one hand, it's it's a call for us to solidify in our group work. Whatever uh, group we recognize as our immediate group, our working group with whom we're connected, and on the other hand, is it's the call to build up our capacity further, recognizing that uh, our um, own working group is just uh, a step in the expansion of both our uh, consciousness and our field of responsibility. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And another impression was that, uh, that um, it's uh, this um, position standing in the, in the focus of the national Ajna, it's very uh, quite a fruitful place for uh, envisioning all those workers, service workers who are uh, outside of our esoteric circles, who stand in a position of responsibility, who stand in a position of holding the vision uh, for the nation and recognizing the nation within its wholeness. And so by meditating on this uh, focus of national ajna, in a way we create a space, in a thought form space, inviting those uh, who has that potential to stand there together alone with us. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is what uh, Sajoli calls uh, the group of best citizens. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's really uh, timely now to to <laughs> expand our our uh, awareness really also to these world workers, national Ajna workers that don't have our don't share our esoteric background. And yet share the vision and responsibility. Right. Yeah, I think this is really important to to uh, uh, recognize what is this what what we now here call um, Ajna 
consciousness, national Ajna consciousness. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to, to read the blue books or the maroon books for, for that. an esoteric sense, telepathic sense. And in a way, it's our subjective outreach to all those world workers that we know about, but who don't identify themselves as uh, members of the new group of world servers. But through our meditation, we create the space for them, for their recognition, being part of this unity, whatever we could would call it. But in essence, is that's that position of world service taken, rec recognizing the position of responsibility and recognizing the vision. Now, great gratitude. Maria Cristina here. Hi, Maria Cristina. Um, I mainly wanted to share on my mind is a conference at the UN entitled Summit of the Future that will be held I think this coming Sunday, Monday, or this coming weekend, September 20th. And it's to search for a vision for the future of global cooperation. I'm reading an enhanced multilateralism, somewhat of a reflection of what we're endeavoring to further mm. in this work. And the other words that really came to mind was um, there was this gap between the, you know, material vision of the future, which is very necessary and happening and beautiful, many beautiful um, men and women of goodwill that are um, creating, be it to fight, you know, environmentally or on many different, you know, peace activists, even in Palestine, but but to bridge the gap between um, these more grounded and material possibilities and the spiritual possibilities that are here for us now. Mm -hmm. And just those words that I heard recently gave me kind of like fuel to start a conversation with wonderful people doing wonderful work, but that there are spiritual possibilities as well as material possibilities as we look to the future, to vision, to, to invoke to invoke a vision um without vision the people perish so mm -hmm. that's all thank you thank you hello here's annette speaking so at first also thank you for drawing our common path so synthetically. So, and it was really um, a big a big line from the personal psychosynthesis to the ashna of the planet. And I, um, I felt the importance to hold all these different step, steps in the same time in, in the consciousness. Sometimes there is the the danger to to go to a wider perspective 
and don't have the alignment so you cannot um be so um mm -hmm. so useful um in the world because you don't have these different um steps um in your consciousness and um i saw it at the end like an elevator um and holding on the different um floors um you you could you could look through through the ashna through the through the window of the eyes um um out um and driving together also as our as our as group in the elevator through these different floors so yes um, and in connection with the Ashna of the planet, I, I thought about this triangle of Shambhala hierarchy and, and humanity and that um, this triangle is so important and to, to, to let the Ashna center um, be very strong and the, the, um, and also in the other direction. When the Ashna center grows, this flow um, becomes small between these three centers. Um, then um, I thought about the future and I was with uh, one, one part of me wanted to, now we want to look on the planet from outside. But then I thought, no, it's too fast to do it like this. Now we should look at different, on different, different fields of, um, of need or of relationship on the planet, which need attention. So, um, because the Ashna Center really has the opportunity to give, to give a lot. Um, so we, we, yeah, and this is what was my vision for our next step. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So not only to observe, but also to give. Yes, the, the, the Ajna Center, of course, is uh, has this has this double function, and uh, indeed, uh, we are still until now in this phase of observation. But uh, eventually, and maybe somebody else would like also to to address this. Are we ready to already uh, be what sometimes we call uh, to become causal uh, in a more directed way, yes, to be more of the magician, um, bringing things about or directing energies rather than only observing them. Um, it's an open question. Uh, perhaps yes, I, I could that... talk to that. Yes, just one more moment. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, just one more moment. Um, what Annette, what you said, and and uh, it's actually the same that Maria Cristina and also Alexander said. Um, this continuity of uh, of these different levels, this elevator, the importance not only to look from above and not only to look from below, but to to hold in our consciousness this whole. Antakarana of of consciousness, uh, all these different levels of density on which we function as this Ajna center, which could be maybe Annette, uh, what I got from you is, is it's like a, a synthetic point that may connect all these different levels. Yes, yes, I agree what you say. Thank you. Very good summarized but I <laughs> yeah thank you so much yes Jonathan yeah I'd, I'd uh, love to follow up on what uh, has has been just mentioned really and highlighted um to your point Alexander of the service in the world who don't identify as servers so much but are doing the work of service they are really within the aura of the ashram uh, and being attracted as a result into their own path of initiation, into their own uh, awakefulness. 
Uh, Jonathan, the... just a moment. Um, I got uh, um, a notice from Margot who was taking notes uh, that please uh, talk a bit slower. Of course. Okay. Thank you. Yes, just to acknowledge what you, you shared there, that um, those co-workers in the world who are working in their own spheres and sectors are held within the ashram, are kind of entering into the ashram via the magnetic nature of the overall consciousness and the interplay, the magnetic field that we hold at our center. The uh, triangle that you mentioned, and that is so important, and to look at our place within it, Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity do we call upon extraplanetary aid is a question and the, and the potential shift towards causality i just have a, a few thoughts to share um the first is a question as to whom do we speak this question of identification what is one's role within the world group? My sense is that we are identifying with and as. Um, and so for me and co-workers working for the uh, nation of the U United States, the experience of being asked by Uta to give a voice to the spirit of the nation in a council was uh, not only challenging, but extraordinarily rewarding to attempt to offer oneself to be able to be in that alignment. As a result of that experience, we have attempted within the work for the United States to meet on a regular basis to rebuild that alignment, to take particular conditions into our awareness and to, as best we can, to speak in that first person. We found it very powerful, very humbling as we begin to not only observe a condition, but to accept it within our own sense of responsibility, to align it con consciously in the sense of repurposing a particular condition, and therefore accepting the possibility of becoming causal with hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And an element of this is to not only repurpose however we understand what that may be, but to reformulate it, to re, um, re reorient a particular condition with the awareness of what the divine plan may be for that particular nation or its condition. So I've been learning very much that there is no reference here to identify with any particular subset of humanity. It's an aspiration to identify truly as mediators with hierarchy for and also with humanity. And to recognize that we're working for the one common ashram as we've noticed here and has been expressed as the one planetary server there is you know that identification i i tend to question a little bit just a little bit uh forgive me please of what do we really mean by the planetary ashna center we know that a center is not a center in isolation it's there in the triangle that annette mentioned to a certain extent it's a midway point. It's, of course, it's aligned with the heart in essence and in its center. 
but it's also in a dynamic relationship with divine will and purpose, Shambhala itself, and the plane of intelligent, creative, causal substance. That is really where our work is going, I would suggest. And to accept that if we can be fearless and offer ourselves up, then we begin to cooperate telepathy telepathically with hierarchy so something i feel that uh i believe we can develop is being developed is to develop techniques of observing a condition any condition it can be between nations perhaps especially in the relationship between nations now and to lift that into right relationship with the divine plan because it's in the relationship where the spiritual soul actually resides and in virgo especially what is being birthed at this moment is the recognition of the precipitation of the essence of the the christ incarnating through a spiritualizing of, of relationships and one final uh, comment is not to be uh, hesitant so uh, with calling upon extra planetary aid why because after such a great age the turning of great cycles the problems we're fa facing and dealing with cannot be solved at the level of their creation we have to be receptive to the Lords of Liberation and the Avatar. The Avatar was brought to our attention before the close of the Second World War. That energy is available to us. It's almost ripe mm -hmm. that we align and learn how to direct these the, these extra special energies that can turn the tide towards the new consciousness synthetic nature of, of the new age once we're through the uh the harmonic convergence or the zero point of of uh, 2025 thank you yeah lots to to consider Thank you, Jonathan. Hmm. Maybe someone would like to speak to these points that Jonathan raised. Um, yeah, or any other points. I maybe would like to add, first of all, I'm resonating with the very, very great attitude, that gratitude, excuse me. And wow, Jonathan, you, you brought in so clearly and so, um, yeah, I could follow so well what you, what you were now resuming from everything we did. Um, Maybe let's start with, I, I resonate very much when you're talking about reception and being receptive because my highest um, my highest moment was when we reached the Ajna Center, the planetary Ajna Center. It was really the experience of holding breathing and at the same time being open for reception. This is the highest level of reception at the moment. For me, the whole meditation was like unveiling, unveiling. And here I resonate with Annette and the elevator. For me, it was this, this stairway. It was like unveiling a stairway 
<clears throat> on which we are really working and trying and going up and going down. And this is not a quality, but this is a 360 degree movement. And I started my notes when I wrote down, it's all about relationship. It's all about the relation work. This is also a 360 degree. But standing there on these pinnacle points in the Ajna centers of our nations, and then feeling the the brotherhood, the companionship with the others, this in this moment something happened to me. And still now I I have I have really a physical um a physical symptom in my heart. So there is there was something wild and there was something given in this moment. And when together we we moved up to the planetary Ajna center, um, I really saw a human, like a human shaped, lightful body erecting from the planet Earth. And it was every single dot of light was one of these planetary servers or planetary elders in training and holding and weaving this new texture and in the same time observing this was the highest point maybe i ever could reach in a meditation and from there going back to to the steps and doing the words the work like Anita said and doing all single necessary relation work and building up work but always having this keeping this in mind and yeah Uta thank you so much for this meditation I, I follow everybody who exchanged here and who contributed everything was so was also happening in my meditation but for me, it was really a kind of vision of a group initiation. Hmm. A group initiation that, that is able to work in a new texture, which is a very technical term for a very miraculous thing. Hmm. So deep, deep, deep gratitude, just to give a few sparks. Thank you so much. Hmm. I would like to uh, just synthesize a few of the comments that were made. This is such a beautiful opportunity, um, so filled with gratitude, honor to um, have been pulled into this, as someone said, that we are, you know, we've been brought here. Um, so the purpose the work that's been done so precisely stated so beautiful the questions deborah presented early on which and and, and a lot of the questions that were of course in the preliminary material seem to have been touched upon by the various speakers um i loved uh jonathan's very concise and actionable um, suggestions of a way forward. And I would suggest that um, I, I have been studying the nature of the soul. Those who know me know this because I'm talking about a lot now. Um, and the even-armed cross and the idea of presenting ours incarnate soul in the center of the even armed cross or service is a, is a moment for me right now. And I posted a, a graphic of an even armed cross with a huge diamond in the center that I created fairly recently with the assistance of AI with the comment that we as the group, and again, this has been expressed verbally, but I tried to express it visually, we as a group, are presenting our incarnate soul, the incarnate soul of our group for service. And in doing so, we open ourselves for 
inspiration, we open ourselves for the way forward. We're, we be still and we know. And if we don't know right now, consciously, we will know. Hmm. Thank you, Marty. Any wishes, maybe? Uh, what we would like to, to see in the nation's lab? Like Marty, you said, actionable suggestions. <laughs> Any more, please? Um, I would like to share that um, I think our work in the council chamber has been so profound and substantive and spiritually charged with the energies of hierarchy and even Shambhala that we begin to turn our attention to how we might serve going forward, exper bravely, experimentally, um, as that group that has coherence in the council chamber, in the Ashna Center, as a bridge between hierarchy and humanity, to contemplate activities of light that would include what one might call crisis response. Mm. And I know the 2025 initiative has been very uh, focused on bringing this kind of inter-kingdom focus on, you know, the Middle East. And as um, I think it, I'm sorry, I was not keeping track of names, but I think it was... Um, Well, I'm not sure I, if it was Helen or Annette. Anyway, um, talking about it's all relationships. It's all relationships. And the America group's been working with something that we've shared before, um, you know, we call soul therapy where we take conditions and relationships into transmutative meditation to bring the energy of synthesis to bear actionably, if you will, on various crisis areas. So I think we would love to explore that further with this wider group because we will be called upon as crisis interveners or mediators um, and I think it's a skill 
that we can develop as a group in the council chamber that's also translatable in our smaller group and or even individual lives. Mm. Just offering that. Mm -hmm. Crisis response. Yeah. Thank you, Debra. We are coming to the end of our time. Is there anyone else who would like briefly to contribute ideas, impressions? This is Margot. Love your neighbor as being yourself, as in a national sense, in cooperative unity, as together we build the new civilization with joy, beauty, and gratitude in divine law and order. a beautiful ending. For our session, let's take another moment just to hold this richness. And gratitude for our, for this work what we can do here, what we are doing together for the council chamber that is a creation of ours together. And let's continue to ponder these sparks that have been shared. Let's just take a moment to radiate this richness, this blessing, this goodness out into our world. and linking up everything back up to the divine plan. And so it is. Okay. Our next lab session is on October 15th and it will be Australia who will be uh, sharing about its relationships with the West and the East. Here we go with relationships. So I give over to Alexander for any announcements. Thank you, Uta. And thank you, friends, for being together in the circle holding our focus within the nation's lab and i invite you to join our coming webinars you see on the screen our uh, regular schedule of our regular webinars and i specifically invite want to invite you tomorrow uh, for our gathering in the garden as we enter the distribution phase of the full moon and the following day on September 19th, uh, please join us for the meditation for the common good. And of course, tonight, uh, for those of us who in the Western Hemisphere and early morning 
for those of us who is in Eastern Hemisphere and during the day for those who is in the Pacific region. Let us be together during the exact time of the full moon, linking subjectively in our intergroup field. Standing together as one planetary server. Together growing to become the planetary Ajna. Much love.